A special thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. Hi everyone, so in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys five thrift flips that I did this past week, and they were all inspired by some high-end home decor sites that I have been loving recently. With that being said, let's get started. For the first project, I wanted to make a footed wooden bowl. And oftentimes it's hard to find two wooden bowls that are the same tone so it would look right together at the thrift store. But I came across this one for just $3.99 that had a beautiful mosaic pattern on the inside. And then I also had this one from a previous thrift trip that I had made for just 99 cents. So I took the smaller of the two bowls and I flipped it upside down and I placed the larger bowl on top of it so it would give like a footed appearance. And you could leave it just as is, but I just wanted to take another step further. So before connecting those two bowls together, I had some old candles lying around and I thought I could make this into a wooden bowl candle. So taking those candles, I put them in a grocery store bag and I just kind of hammered them down so they would be easier to melt. Then I just took those pieces of wax and I placed them in these jars that I use all the time to melt candle wax with. And I place a little bit of water in a large saucepan on medium high heat and I just let that melt down completely. And I wanted it to kind of melt evenly, so I thought it would be a good idea to do a three wick candle. And I got this candle wick kit on Amazon. It was really affordable. I'll link it in the description down below for you guys. And I'm just placing them kind of evenly. Actually having that mosaic pattern was helpful to make sure that these were evenly spread out. I did want to point out one quick thing and that is I was really selective when I chose the wood bowl for this project because you want to make sure there is a barrier between the wax and the wooden bowl as this mosaic pattern is because I actually have attempted this project before without having a barrier between and what happens is the oil from the wax kind of seeps through the wood and it gives this sort of like messy appearance on the exterior of the wooden bowl. So definitely you'll wanna make sure there's some sort of a barrier in between. So with our wicks in place and our candle wax melted down, all I have to do now is just pour the wax into the wooden bowl. After I trimmed the wicks down and the wax is solidifying, I'm taking some E6000 and applying a generous amount to the bottom of the smaller of the two bowls. And then I'm going to take the bigger bowl and place it directly on top of it. And after I connected the two bowls together, I did just kind of a once around to make sure that it looked good from all angles and it wasn't lopsided anywhere. And to aid the E6000 in curing really well together, I placed a book with something heavy on top of it so that way it will be one solid piece. And if the last project was just a little too many steps for you and you want something really easy to achieve that wooden bowl candle look, I found this glass cylinder at the thrift store for just $3.99. And then I had found these wooden bowls. I don't know if you guys remember, if you've been following me for a while, you've seen me haul these before in a thrift haul that I did about a year ago. And I decided these would be perfect for this project. So another thing I really was specific about this wooden bowl that I chose for this specific project was it had to be cylindrical as well and it had to be the same size. So it had to be like the perfect marriage of sizes. And again, I'm gonna be taking some E6000 and applying very small amounts to a paintbrush and just applying it all along this rim here. I personally probably wouldn't use hot glue in this project. You might be able to get away with it on the first project, but for this project, I wanted to make sure that um, it wouldn't look messy. And E6000 just dries a little bit clearer, I think, and I think it just gives you a better hold in the end. And for a project like this, you really do want a strong hold. So with that piece, with all of the adhesive on it, I'm just placing it directly on top of the rim of the wooden bowl. And again, placing something very heavy on top will create a very strong bond. And E6000 is one of those adhesives that I think a lot of DIYers maybe don't like to use because it takes a really long time for it to cure, but once it's cured, it'll last. I 
I wanted to share with you guys a product I have been absolutely loving recently and it is called Function of Beauty. You guys are always commenting about my hair. You're asking if it's real, the products that I use, etc. But here's the thing, everybody's hair is different. So that's why I'm so happy to share with you guys all of the things about Function of Beauty. So prior to ordering a Function of Beauty product, they want you to take a mini quiz and it takes about two minutes and it's just all about your hair as its current state and what your goals are for your hair. And you can customize it even further than that, which is to pick the scent. You can choose the color. You can put your name on it, so that way maybe your partner doesn't get any ideas on whose shampoo is whose. And bonus, Function of Beauty is also vegan and cruelty-free with no toxins, GMO, or parabens. So it's not only good for you, but it's good for the environment. Click on the link in the description box below to try your first custom Function of Beauty formula for under $30 plus free shipping. For the next project, I wanted to make a vintage inspired aged jar. You have seen this everywhere, I'm sure. And I think the two things that are the most important when you're gonna do a project like this are the materiality and the shape. And I really liked the round kind of bulbous shape of this pot, as well as it had so many divots and ripples that I knew that it was going to take the dirt really well. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. The first thing I did was I took some matte black spray paint and I just spray painted the entire thing, flipping it all around to make sure that I got in all of the crevices as much as possible because I wanted that to be the starting point. Also, I wanna mention I followed Valerie Aguirre's um, technique that she did many months ago, so I will link her video in the description box below. So as that is drying, I can see that the terracotta is going to still come through a little bit, so I knew I was going to need to do another coat to make that my starting point. After that second coat of matte black spray paint had dried, I took some dry dirt and I placed it all over the vessel, but focusing in on the areas that had detail to it already. So any divots or ripples, I made sure to apply extra dirt in those areas so it would create more dimension. So this is what it was looking like after two coats of matte black paint and one once over of the dirt. And I was pretty happy with it, but I wanted to see what happened after I sealed it because the sealant will kind of mute everything you just did. So I let that dry overnight. And then when I came back the next morning, it was not dramatic enough. I wanted there to be a little bit more differentiation between the parts that had divots and the parts that did not. So I went in with some more dirt one more time and applied it all over the vessel again. And then I was really happy with the way that looked even after I did one more coat of clear at the end. I felt like it gave it a nice vintage inspired appearance. So temporarily, until I can find the right plant for it, I found this eucalyptus on Amazon, so I'll link it in the description below for you guys, and I decided to place it in this vessel. For the next project, you guys might remember when I whitewashed this artwork and it worked in my previous home, but as you know, we've moved and I've decided to kind of revamp this artwork because I found this rug at Target for my son's room and I really wanted to make some artwork for his room that was just kind of neutral but cool with a little bit of a blue tinge. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So the first thing I did was I took some Krylon satin black paint and I painted the frame gold. I loved this piece even when it was whitewashed because I love having a floating frame around canvas art. I think it just completes the look overall. I've also DIY'd my own floating frame so I'll link that video here. And as the frame is drying, I picked up some paints from the Dollar Tree as well as some brushes and a putty knife. I knew I wanted four different kind of tones. So the first thing I did was I dumped white paint in each of these buckets. I just feel like this is the easiest way to get gradient artwork. I just feel like it's a nice way to get a good starting point for each of the different tones that we're gonna do. So it's going to get progressively darker by adding more paint to each bucket. So I didn't do anything to the first bucket and then the second bucket, I'm just adding just a little bit of this terracotta color as well as a little bit of black. And then each bucket, I'm adding a little bit more than I did to the previous bucket. And then I'm going to stir each bucket really well together with the exception of the first because nothing is added to that one. And now is a good time to kind of evaluate to make sure that those are the colors that I really wanted and it is exactly what I wanted, just a grayish blue color. 
and then taking the brush from each bucket, I am applying a small amount of each different color of paint with each color getting increasingly darker. And then I took the putty knife and just kind of blended those two together. I like doing the putty technique because I think it gives it a real like gradient look as well as giving it a abstract appearance. Abstract art, if you are new to art or a beginner, is the best way to go because it's abstract. You can't mess it up. And once I ran out of paint and the first selection of paint was spread out with that putty knife, I just repeated that process until the entire canvas was covered. And then the last thing that I did, I think one thing that makes canvas art look a little bit more expensive is if you apply a clear finish on top of your canvas art. And I will link that down below in the description for you guys. It really does make the difference. For the last project, it is one of my favorite things that I have found at a thrift store, and that is this asymmetrical stone side table. And I found this at a Hartville thrift shop that one of you guys actually recommended to me, and it was so incredible. Thank you so much for recommending that store to me because I found this little side table here, and it was amazing, but I did not like one thing. It had a lot of pink tinge. So I'm gonna share with you the easiest project of the bunch, and I went to Lowe's and I found this linen white chalk paint, and I am just going to spray this entire stone side table with this white paint. Stone side tables are having such a moment in home decor right now, but they are so expensive. Like even the ones at Target are at least $100. And this side table is heavy, so it feels like it's good quality. It's not made from like Dollar Tree stuff, like it's actually stone, which I really liked, but the color was just wrong. So, so often I find at the thrift store, it's not that you have to move mountains to get the home decor look that you're really trying to achieve, but just changing the color or adding a little bit of texture or making small adjustments to things that are already okay, but making them your aesthetic. And after I gave it two coats of this linen chalk paint, I did a once over with some matte clear spray paint as well, just to seal everything together. And that is all that I have for you all today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I post home decor and DIY content on Sundays. And don't forget to check the link in the description box below so you can get your first custom function of beauty formula for just under $30 and free shipping. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye.